What's up, everyone? We're back on our Star Wars like saga podcasting, Review, reviewing, etc. Uh, today we are going to be talking about Episode One. Let's start the show. <laughs> I'm Michael Dugastia. I'm John Luke Lowe. Let's start the show. Alrighty, so today we are talking about Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Critically reviewed, like I think it's the worst critically reviewed Star Wars film. I think it might be, although I think two is worse in my own opinion. But I I agree. I think two was worse, like in retrospect. But uh, we'll talk about episode one. So first off, what were your ex- expectations going in? Like if you remember, because we were like, in, like ten what, years 1999, old. Nineteen ninety nine, I think it was. Damn, we were. I don't. We even were ten rem- years old. I don't even remember seeing in theaters. I'm, I know I, I don't must think have. I did either. I don't. I think I we did, but we probably didn't. I'll be honest though, as a kid, like I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, I loved Jar Jar as a kid. I didn't love Jar Jar. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go that far. <laughs> I thought the movie was like a fun adventure movie. Yeah. It didn't feel like the old Star Wars, but I was like okay with it. It was it was a new Star Wars, and right. it was pretty cool. I think I, was, I, was, I love the games too that came out and followed it. Oh like yeah, like a Pod Racer and some other one where you fly like a Naboo ship. So, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think I know what you're talking I about. That was fun. Um, I, you I, remember seeing in theaters? Yeah, I think I did. I Good must have because I was going crazy when I first saw. Like I think, I think yeah, there were trailers back then. Yeah. Yeah, they had trailers. Yeah. The I, trailers I, were good, if I remember right. Yeah. They were. Expectation wise, seen. I, I I've seen four, five, and six, but I was not like invested in the Star Wars universe mm. until like the prequel trilogy. I'm like one of those like outcast people well, well, not you're, outcast, you're just like, like the new generation who grew yeah. up with like the new star wars even if you even if you saw the old star wars first yeah like you because for me star wars is the, the personally i always love the new technology mm-hmm. so i will probably just lean towards the people because of the technology available to it mm. but four five six is always gonna have like a special place in my heart but in terms of expectations i guess a lot of people were expecting something else i mean i don't know something how good like Okay, in between episode 3 and 4 was what, 10, 20 years, something like that? 30. 30. I think. No. No, 30. 20. Is, 20. Th- yeah, 30 is 6 and 7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think more like 20. Yeah, oh yeah, 20. So I think we were starting something within that time frame versus all the way back. Yeah, he took it so far back to where Anakin but of was course, a kid. I mean, we, see, here's I the thing then. Like, we like weren't that. really expecting the. Well, no, I think we were, but not so far back as to. Finding Anakin and then training him all the way up. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people were expecting like an Obi Wan Kenobi and Anakin like, not buddy film, but more like where they're already friends and they're already kind of older and they're like in the Clone Wars. Or it whatever. would have been cool to actually have seen a Clone War film. Yeah. Right. Not just the cartoon. Not yeah, not just like the lead up to it. Like the film does like the yeah. lead up into the Clone Wars. It would have been cool. But if then they're, again, like, it they're already like... in the Clone Wars and they're like already like. Uh, Anakin is being taught by Obi-Wan, but he's already, like, pretty well defined on his own. Yeah. And then you start to see him, like, turn to the dark side already. Where, number one, it sort of sets up, like, the Emperor as being, like, this weird mastermind who control who can control everything and... Uh... <laughs> I don't... I still don't get the Emperor. I mean, I, I get... When did you figure out... I get out... he's super dark, but, like, why does he go through, like, all this weird hullabaloo to like complete his quest like he just takes so many actions like he gets the trade federation to like not do trade with Naboo that's like his first action okay and then from there on he goes to like do some weird stuff some, because yeah. he realizes Anakin is the chosen one or, or I agree I, I, don't I think understand. the whole plot of it was just like so it was, convoluted it was so, too like uh, too much political intrigue and yeah, whatnot yeah, yeah. and, and not enough stuff, definitely not enough like explanations to why i mean we we wanted yeah. star wars not like the born trilogy you know what i mean yeah yeah <laughs> but if they had made a clone war movie it would probably have its own trilogy because <laughs> looking at the, the cartoon like yeah. they were all over the place yeah. and, and by think... the way i haven't watched all the cartoon yet i've only watched like parts of it so don't spoil it for me Watch it! It's while well, it's still on Netflix. I am. I am trying to. Wait, did Disney make? Did Disney accepted the Clone War cartoon as canon, right? Yeah. Okay, I thought they took it out. But I don't. I'm not gonna spoil anything. I just don't like the way that they should have kept it instead of doing the stupid Rogues whatever cartoon they was that was. Oh, the new one. Yeah, yeah the, Rebels. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, Ro- yeah, Rebels. Um. At least Liam Neeson was in it. 
Yeah, but I, I don't mean, think we like. So we're going. We're going yet. to things that we liked about it now. Yeah, let's. Yeah, let's go. Things we like. Okay, things we liked about it. Yeah, I liked Liam Neeson. He his acting was good. I didn't like Obi Wan Kenobi, or I didn't like Qui Gon Jinn all that much though. Yeah. He's just sort of there, and yeah, that's about it. He's just there. The the pod racing scene was fun too. Yeah, it was. It was a fun scene. Uh oh uh, wait, you know what? I think episode one at least had an adventure feel. Yeah, it, it kind of did. It kind of did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you were going to Naboo, you went to Tatooine. Yeah, it, it, it definitely did. I just got I just got lost with like the plot, and I didn't really care about the characters. So, like, for example, the Chancellor sends Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon to the Trade Federation to negotiate. Yeah. And then things go wrong, and then they have to hightail it back to Coruscant. They, they, they right. first have to go to Tatooine to get engine parts or whatever. Yeah. They get back to Coruscant. And then even though the, the Jedi are the cha- sent by the Chancellor, the Chancellor doesn't even, like, talk to them. He's just like, oh, I don't trust you guys, even though I sent you and you were there on, t- on uh, Naboo. Um, I'm going to have to go to a Senate meeting and try to debate this, rather than just take your word for it that the Trade Federation is messed up. Right. Like, why? <laughs> so many oh, things are just weird. The Emperor like, uh, wasn't uh, Chancellor yet, I remember. No, that. I know. Yeah, it was someone else. The other yeah. Chancellor was just, even though... He was just, like, a, a bad the politician. In the beginning, in the beginning scroll... It says that um, the Chancellor sent the Jedi to negotiate, and then they come back and he doesn't even talk to them. He's just like, <laughs> oh, well, I got to go to a Senate meeting and, and see if it's real. I'm not going to take your word for him. I'm like, what? Why? It just So the adventure was there, but it was just all this weird politics stuff got mixed in and uh-huh. just didn't feel right. I remember one of the biggest complaints was like the over-explanation of George Lucas of the Force. Yeah, midichlorians. Why? Yeah, and I was... And, when I first watched it, I didn't, I didn't mind, but then I watched the uh, Funny or Die, uh, Steve Jobs, with like the guy who's on the Mac commercials does play Steve Jobs, mm. and then he like he goes to meet George Lucas, and George Lucas is explaining the Metaclorians. I was like, okay, I get it now. It's this is ridiculous. Yeah, it just goes against what everything that Yoda said. Like the Force, it's like around you. It's in everything, and then to just have it like be like part of your cells. So like there's this thing like um, like Anakin, you know, he got his arm chopped off and his yeah. leg chopped off. Uh-huh. So then people are like, oh well, does Anakin have less midichlorians now, so he's not <laughs> as powerful because he got his arm chopped off and his leg chopped off? I'm like, well, yeah, according to George, George Lucas, that would probably you'd probably be right because your midichlorians are part of your cells, and if you have less cells, then you have less midichlorians. But the cells can multiply. I guess, but that's no, <laughs> no. The Force is not midichlorians in my book. I mean, I know it's canon, but not really. I me. mean. They were even saying that Qui Gon, in terms of uh, like a Jedi Master, was basically on Yoda's level. So maybe really? he understood the things. Yeah, if you watch the Clone Wars, there was an episode where, like, Qui Gon was like teaching Yoda. Oh really? Yeah, I was like, whoa. So is Qui Gon like more knowledgeable in the Force now or something? But yeah, he definitely has that. He definitely is very wise. It's Liam Neeson. Yeah, it is Liam. Neeson. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um. Cast- Obi Wan. Yeah. He just sort of sits there too. He's like, he just tags along with, yeah. with Qui-Gon, without, like, doesn't you know, really do anything, he doesn't really taught anything. Without uh, going there. too specifically, there was one conversation you and I had a long time ago um, where you said the reason why the, pre- the original trilogy was so good, every character had a purpose. Yeah. And you said the prequel trilogy doesn't. Yeah. Why? Like, Obi-Wan? Okay, I mean, okay, because let's, let's just say like Luke... Yeah. Okay, he's a desert boy. He wants something bigger in his life, so he yeah. gets the Jedi, and then now he's going to be Jedi Master. Uh-huh. What's wrong with that compared to the rise of Anakin? Anakin is just a little... Okay, so if you haven't watched Mr. Plinkett's review, you should watch that first. Okay. Uh, so Mr. Plinkett's this guy online who reviews things... Oh, is that the battery? No, it's fine. It's okay. still over 11 minutes. Uh, so part of the problem with like Anakin, especially in the first one, is he's just a kid. Okay. And things are just happening to him. He doesn't like. He's not in control of anything. Right. Like he's just sort of like tagged along because he's. But he's a kid. He's, I know he's a kid, but it just it doesn't make it that interesting. Okay. And then like in number two, Anakin is just like a whiny little brat. Who, like. <laughs> he is. He doesn't. It, it's, it was painful yeah. to watch when it's I like rewatched sand. it. Ugh, it gets everywhere. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, and then at number three, he's like, he's he gets better, especially as an as an actor, Hayden Christensen, but yeah. he's still just like making decisions that like don't make sense. Like, he's willing to like kill lots of little children, 
in order to save his wife. And it's just like, why? You're a Jedi and you've been brought up just because your wife's going to die. Yeah, sure, it's going to suck. Wife and child are going to die. Maybe, because of your vision. It's a maybe. Right, right, yeah. It's not for sure. Um, he just goes and, like, kills children and kills everybody. It's just like, uh, I don't get it. I, I don't get, like, his his transformation. I mean, I, I get it. It's on the paper, and it happens in the movie. Uh-huh. But I don't really, like, understand. You, so you just didn't I don't, feel I don't invested. Connect, I don't connect with it or invest in it. Yeah, oh, it's okay. Just like, uh, it's okay. He turned, <laughs> he turned to the dark side. He's Darth Vader. That's what George Lucas got his goal. He did it. He wrote the script. Okay. And I guess well, overall... That's my take. I mean, I'm sure there are people who like the prequels. and Yeah. I think they're not as bad as a lot of people like who are like they me. Out. They come out to be. Yeah. Um... But yeah, they're just really disappointing in my book. Uh, did you like Darth Maul? I I liked him as an action figure. No! He doesn't say anything. It doesn't matter! It's a double freaking blade lightsaber! I don't care. I don't care about no. if he can do three flips in the air. If he doesn't have a strong character, like I don't I don't understand his motivation. He's just he's just a henchman. Okay, hench- I'll give you that. He's a henchman. Okay? I'll give you that, yeah. He's a henchman. I, the lightsaber battle was super cool. Okay, so back to you like the Darth Maul battle or the lightsaber battle? Yeah, super okay. cool. Uh, I think the reason why it was generally liked by everyone, it was something we never seen before because all the lightsaber That's battles true. of the original trilogy yeah. were like you know fencing. Yeah, and like now one it's one. like this was geez. like two on one, two. Yeah, yeah that was pretty cool. Yeah, and the music was epic. Epic, epic music. Duel, uh, it was Duel of the Fates. Yeah, yeah. it was amazing. So, yeah, okay, now that you're bringing up the point, yeah, Darth Maul really didn't have a purpose other than just cannon fodder, as I... Yeah. At first, I didn't really understand, like, okay, so that's the Emperor. I didn't recognize the Emperor. Yeah. Well, I remember as a kid. As a kid, I was like, maybe that's him, maybe it is Yeah. And then but I was like, wait, how come like, it's... Okay, yeah, yeah, totally. how, yeah. I think the reason why is um, more, it was more focused on just getting Anakin. Yeah. Instead of, like, developing everyone else. That's true. Okay, talk to me about the Gungans. The Gungans? Yeah. They're just... Are they the worst thing ever made? <laughs> they're just sort of there. I don't I don't really care for them all that much. They're they're fine, I guess. I don't... I, don't, I, I actually don't really understand why there's so much hate on Jar Jar and whatnot. I, I guess... Because he steps in the poopy. <laughs> <laughs> He does, and it's just like he's there for kid jokes and poopy jokes. That's not what, like, the original is you're not going to hear, like, a fart joke or a poop joke or anything like that. And then this one is just okay. like, oh. Who, who was the comic relief in the original trilogy? Just the the characters were, they had, They like, were all funny. They had, yeah, they had, like, light light moments, like, actual characters. Like, they had moments where they were funny, and they had moments where they were, like, really dramatic. Like, that's actual characters. If you just, like, have a character who's there solely for comedy, because that's just his purpose mm-hmm. to be funny then he's not an actual character like he's just uh, a character type right even uh the character of natalie portman padme didn't really serve much purpose either yeah she really did like you would think uh, a queen would at least yeah now that we're talking about this it's finally like dawning on me how much was yes. wrong with the prequel trilogy <laughs> but i i I guess yeah, Portman was all all right in the first one. I guess. Like, here's the, the thing, though. Right now, she's an unbelievable actress. But when I was watching the the trilogy, I was like, this is kind of bad. Yeah, for the most part, she's pretty boring. I think it was yeah. just the writing. Oh, I yeah. noticed that, like the, the writing is really. A lot really, of the problems are like, with the writing. Yeah. I mean, I'm, again, I'm not expecting like a James Bond script, but mm-hmm. not that corny a script. Yeah, with it, characters that are just sort of there and the plot is just sort of weird i'll get i'll give it like it's epic but it's also just really strange and kind of convoluted right albeit epic it is mm-hmm. epic i'll give it that okay uh i had nothing else to say on episode one i think it was just it was fun we were kids going yeah. back on in and out a little bit disappointed how, would, than you, how would you rate it i would probably give it a six a six yeah. i would give it a solid 4.5 wow not that hard that hard i don't I tried watching it again in preparation for Star Wars Episode Seven, uh, and it was just a uh, it was so hard to do. And just like, okay, fast forward, yeah. skip through that. Okay, right. that's what happens. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, I, I there was a Christmas sale on the 
on the whole Star Wars saga on iTunes, so I bought it. Uh. And I was and the once I downloaded the first of the prequel trilogy, I would just fast forward through the lightsaber fights. Yeah. I was like, that's Wait, all what? I did. No, two the lightsaber oh, fights. Oh, two lightsaber fights. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was like that's the only good part. Of it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, final word though. I understand you want to focus on Anakin, but even then, there wasn't enough to care about Yeah, they Anakin. focused on him, but not like in the right way, I don't think. I, I guess like the only thing that really matters is when he was presented to the Jedi Council. You know, and then they were trying to just evaluate what to do with him. Yeah. I think that's the only thing you really got out of Episode 1. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. You just set up Anakin in a very insignificant way. Yeah. He's there. Yep. Okay, guys. So stay tuned. We are going to bring you Episode 2 pretty soon. See ya. See you.